John. Welcome to the second part in a series of videos reviewing this Artec 180 MIG welder using a spool gun to weld aluminium. In the first video, I explained how the spool gun worked. I showed you how to put the wire in and briefly went round the machine showing you what the various controls do. In this video, I've got a full bottle of organ, lots of little bits of aluminium, a full spool of wire. I'm going to try and do a lot of welding, try and get some shots through a welding mask. Not just shots of welding the way it's meant to weld, shots of welding with the wire running too slow, the wire too fast, showing you how to set the machine up to get the best out of it. I haven't really used a spool gun for 20 years, and the spool gun I used then was a horrible big 300 amp, three phase thing, welding dirty, filthy wagon bodies up, no fun at all. I've had a little bit of play with this and I must admit I'm quite impressed with it. Before we do any welding at all I want to talk a little bit about safety. Obviously with an electric welder you're using high electric currents so you don't want to be taking the welder outside in the rain. As well as putting off spark and heat the arc, the electric arc also gives off ultraviolet radiation. This will burn your skin and damage your eyes. So you need to wear a mask to protect our eyes from the electric arc. This is a quick change mask, I've got two or three masks. That's the one I like to use for MIG welding. You need to wear decent gloves, leather gauntlets to protect your hands from the heat as well as the ultraviolet. Any exposed skin must be caught up. Don't wear a fleece like this because it'll just melt and burn. Personally, I wear a cotton jumper and then fire retardant overalls on top. Right, that's enough of the health and safety Let's actually get stuck in and get some welding done. MIG welding uses a combination of voltage and wire speed and wire thickness to control the welding amperage. The thicker the material, the more voltage, the more wire speed you need. And you get thicker again, you actually need a thicker wire to carry the heavy amperage. On an inverter welder like this, you haven't got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You've got infinitely variable voltage and wire speed the same. Basically, you need to experiment with the voltage and the wire speed until you get a decent weld. I've had a little bit of play around with this and I found those settings here to be fairly good on 2.5 aluminium. What I'll do, I'll try and do some welds through a welding mask, video the welds with the settings with too much wire, not enough wire, too high voltage, not enough voltage to show you the, the different effects it has and then once you hit the what I would call the sweet spot, you can hear it, the welder actually sings, and it's you know it's doing a nice weld. Right, enough talk, let's get set up, let's get some welding done. Right, I've got three aluminium test pieces here. I'm going to do run three separate pieces, because what happens with aluminium is, once you run a weld, your next weld on the same piece of aluminium isn't a true reflection because that aluminium becomes heat soaked. The first one, I'm going to weld it with too low voltage or too high a wire speed and you'll see the result. The second one I'll do the opposite way, too high a voltage or too low a wire speed and the third one I'll try and get right. This first weld is going to be too cold, not enough voltage and too much wire. This next weld will be too hot, too much power, not enough wire. So burn the wire back. Right, this time I've got a fairly decent setting. Yeah, by the noise, that was a much cleaner weld. Right, these are the three test welds I've just done. That's the first one where it had too much wire or not enough voltage. You can see how it's standing up on top, it hasn't really penetrated. It's a little bit of very poor penetration. The second one was the opposite, it was either not enough wire and too much power. If you look at it, it's blown a hole and it's melted, it's gone right through. And the third one is quite a decent weld. That's quite a reasonable setting. You can see the weld 
is dug in quite nicely, turn it over, it's gone right through 100% penetration. Once you get to well like that, you can start tweaking and playing with wire feed and voltage and dial it in just nice. I've got a simple lap turn set up in 1.2mm aluminum plate. A little bit of surface soup just brushes off. To me that weld looks a little bit cold. It could do with either slightly more power or slightly less wire. It has actually penetrated all the way through towards the end of the weld as the material got slightly hotter. Turn the weld up a little bit. Leave the welding wire the same and we'll try it again. I'm just going to turn the power up a little bit. A little bit at a time, try it, a little bit more, try it. That's the best way, in fact it's the only way to set up a MIG welder on aluminium. That weld is much better, much hotter. Better penetration altogether. I've tried now with the same power setting in slightly less wire. Same weld but slightly less wire. Just a little bit. symptom of MIG welding aluminium then it is a there's a problem not a problem at all really so that's 1.2 aluminium lap weld next thing was it was Right, I'm certainly happy with that. It blew through there towards the end, but that was me. I'm trying to weld old cameras and all kinds. That's the weld there. Penetrated right through the back, but not too much. It hasn't blown holes in it. Very little black suit. I don't know why that brush is all it takes to remove it. Quite a nice weld as well. Not quite as pretty as a TIG weld, but a lot faster. Right, I've got set up here some 2.2 aluminium and I'm going to do a lap weld. These are the settings I'm going to try first. A little bit of black soup, but you quite often get that with aluminium MIG welding. It's simply wire brushes off. As I've said before, that's more of a symptom than a problem. Quite a nice weld. Decent penetration. You can see where it's marked it all the way through. I'll turn it up a little bit and we'll try welding the other, the other side. I'm going to increase the voltage but leave the wire speed alone to try that and see if that gets a little bit more penetration. That's quite a nice set in that. These are the same settings and I've got a T-joint set up in the 2.2mm aluminium. Right, I must 
I mean, I was quite impressed with that. The speed at which it welds is absolutely amazing. So it's penetrated all the way through. There's hardly any suit at all on that weld. So that is a real good setting for a, a T joint. I think I'm basically now at the limit of what the 0.8 wire will do. I'll put the 1mm wire in so I can get some more power out of it and go on to some thicker material.